right after his daughter is decapitated. He's like, it's a cool rock though. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of First and last, and possibly something in the middle. Today, we're gonna to be taking a little bit of a left turn while we've done two romanticy novels up to this point for this series. Now we are going to be flipping it over to a Goodkind book. Terry Goodkind is one of the most controversial authors within the fantasy space. Uh, he has been dethroned on that platform by somebody who I cannot name. The last time I talked about Terry Goodkind was when I mentioned his passing about three or four years ago. And I mean no disrespect to the guy, we are going to be just memeing on a book as I have done with Fourth Wall, as I have done with... Fourth Wing. Fourth Wall's our merch, baby. <laughs> as I have done with Fourth Wall, as I have done with the Court of Thorns and... You just said it again! as I have done with Fourth Wing and as I have done with The Court of Thorns and Roses. And I guess you could call my Robert Newcomb review a, <laughs> a similar level of memeing on, though that was an actual review where these, I wanna make it clear, are not to be considered. I am only reading sections of this book that Kayla has highlighted for me to read uh, because there are no chapters in this novella, which isn't unheard of, that's fine. But before we get started, it's time to talk about today's sponsor, who pairs quite well with this video. Not that it's wine-based, because it's called Paired. See how I did that? That's called a transition. That's a sippy sip. Some of you might remember Paired. They're the relationship app specifically made for couples, and Kayla and I have had quite a good time playing their games and quizzes. Before Paired, Kayla and I love playing games that we can just break open anywhere, but we were stuck to like books or journals, which are really limited. But with Paired, we're constantly updated with new games and quizzes to share with each other that allow us to just spark conversation. From relationship check-in, you or me, would you rather, and so so many more. So Paired really was just all around the better option than anything else we've used. Genuinely, it has brought about some of the most fun and memorable conversations that Kayla and I have ever had. But to make sure this conversation is stimulating for you all just as much as it is for us, we've decided to gamify a little bit. Kayla has already answered questions to the Hugs and Kisses quiz, and for any I get wrong, that's a sippy sip. Get my results. Only 60% we matched on. No way! <laughs> what, I have to do four shots? It's 11 in the morning. It's a shoddy shot. So if you're looking to build a deeper connection to the most important person in your life, go ahead and click the link in the description down below to get 25% off the premium paired subscription and a seven day free trial. Back to the video. And we're back. And now it's time to get our sippy sips prepared. That had like one click left and I felt it. All right, first we'll start with Kayla because she doesn't get a refill. So she likes just tell me when. And I love that this is in one of our neon glows. Ben, I need you to know that I just said neon glows, and what I meant to say was neon ghosts. And I was gonna point out that it's merch and then make a joke about, wouldn't it be funny if there was other merch currently visible on screen because this shirt is about to be unveiled in the next merch drop, but I screwed it up so bad, I'm going to have you just leave this explanation addressed to you in, and I'm gonna hand the glass to Kayla. I'm terrified for how this is gonna go. And you all at home can keep track of exactly how much I drink. Yeah, everyone's so upset he's spaghetti about the wine glasses. Is this good? Okay, I'm gonna try it. Sippy sip number one, just to get us started. It's a little too sweet for me. So we're going to start by reading Terry Goodkind's Dead of Bones, which is a prequel to uh, apparently Terry Goodkind's other work and a mile, it's pitched as, a milestone of storytelling set in the world of the Sword of Truth. Dead of Bones is the story of young Abby's struggle to win the aid of the wizard Zed Zorander. <laughs> I pictured Derek Zoolander, but a wizard, it was funny. <laughs> the most important man alive. Isn't that, it's kind of subjective. You're the most important woman alive to me. Aww. Abby is trapped not only between both sides of the war, 
but in a mortal conflict between two powerful men. For Zed, who commands power most men can only imagine, granting Abby's request would mean forsaken his sacred duty. Forsaking his sacred duty. Let's go ahead and start off here. Oh, we're starting with dialogue. Okay, bold. I like that. That's actually something I enjoy with books. Um, starting with dialogue or something with like personality filled like statement from like a first person perspective usually gets me. All right, let me get into this. What do you got in the sack, dearie? <laughs> I was expecting something along the lines. I just saw a quotation, didn't read it. And I was expecting like, the betrayal runs deep. I don't know, something, but instead we got what do you got in the sack, dearie? Okay. Abby was watching a distant flock of whistling sw whistling swans? That's not me making a mistake. Does swans whistle? I'm actually asking a genuine question. Does swan make a whistling noise? Ben, look up the sound swan make. Put it in. Is this making up for your nightmare of a trip? Yeah. Graceful white specks against the dark soaring walls of the keep. As they made their interminable journey past ramparts, Bastions, towers, and bridges lit by the low sun. The sinister specter of the keep had seemed to be staring back the whole of the day. Oh, I'm already getting sort of truth flashbacks. The way Terry Goodkind writes, he somehow wrote like AI writes fantasy before AI wrote fantasy. <laughs> He writes like you would think an AI writes a book, but this was published in like what, 90s? So like it just, Ah, it drives me nuts. As the woman peered up, she licked the tip of her tongue through the slot where a tooth was missing. That's imagery. Okay, that, that works. That I'm going you. Uh, something precious? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, maybe Terry Goodkind's winning me over. This third par fourth paragraph, that is visceral. Mainly it's because I hate old people. And my grandpa, if you're watching this, you can be around me. Abby clutched the burlap sack to herself as the sh as she, that's a sippy sip. She clutched the burlap sap to herself as she shrank a little from the grinning woman. Just some of my things, that's all. This is a really interesting opening. We're like, we're opening with a creepy old woman asking about a sack. Say what you will about good kind. He can start a book? Sorceresses, counselors, and even a confessor. Ooh, if you read Sword of Truth, you know that's an Aes Sedai. Not really. But the confessor going up to the keep, dressed in a simple satin, satin, satini? Satiny. Satiny. Satiny? No, no, okay, come on. Who the f put satiny? It's either satin or it's not. You can't say it's satiny. Sorry. Is it satin or not? I'm so confused by that. What's he wearing? It's leathery, I don't know. F <laughs> The city made her apprehensive, but not as apprehensive as the keep towering on the mountain above it, and that not as much as her reason for being there. Okay. Sorceress, the old woman whispered to Abby. Oh God, the idea of an old person whispering to me. Get your moist mouth the f away from my ear. I'm not gonna take my mouth, moist mouth, <laughs> my moist mouth away from this microphone. <laughs> I see a really long note from Kayla on this page and it makes me happy. Need to read it. Oh, this feels like early fan fiction. Like there are so- There's so many. You put my, not many. No, that goes. There are so many great fanfics now, but this- uh, There are so many great fanfics now, but this reminds me of late middle school writing. Okay, I thought I was being harsh. Jesus. That dried out my eyes. It is out of sincere obligation to those we serve that the wizards. But please try to understand that individual desires are often determined to the greater good, detrimental to the greater good. That's a sippy sip. Wine flavored pretzels, surprisingly terrible. Abby stepped forward. She had to swallow before she could bring herself to say the words. I must see the first wizard himself, wizard Zorander. 
how can you not hear that name and pick Zoolander? Which is not Terry's fault. That came out after this book, I believe Ben dates. And it's not his fault, most likely. But the one apparently in charge of the three gave the sorceress a look so barren of timidity that it bordered on contempt. Okay, I, that deserves a pretzel. I'm gonna eat a pretzel every time I have no words. I need to take a sip. Oh wait, hydrate. Hydrate when you drink. Their breastplates or chainmail covered with red tune expanded around their edge in black. It's edges, but that's not worth a sippy sip. It is. I'm an honest man. I may be an asshole. I may be dyslexic. I may be stupid. We are 24 pages into a less than 200 page book. And we have yet to have our character ask what she needs of Zorander. That back promised a whole hell of a lot of stakes, growth, and development. If we hit the 50 page mark before she even asks, what the fuck else can even happen? I'm gonna say this with my whole ass chest. Fourth Wing is a demonstrably better read. Fourth Wing knows what it is and markets to its audience well. This is a man's fart. I'm skipping ahead. Abby wanted the wizard to hurry up and see her, but time stubbornly dragged by. In a way, she wished he refuses. Refuse, wish he would refuse. I'm so drunk. As the sorceress turned back to Abby, the first wizard will see you now. Now this is where Kayla told me to stop reading. We are at page 30. I don't know what she's gonna ask and we are well over 10% done with this book. I have to guess. I'm gonna guess that she is gonna ask the wizard not to bring back her mother. That's too obvious even for TG. So instead, she is going to ask, what would Terry Goodkind want a damsel in distress to ask an all powerful wizard? Bring. Bring. Hello? Kayla, I'm using one of my lifelines. Yeah? Um, could you give me a vague hint? Oh, pregnancy. And so they have children. What could she be wanting to say? She wants to have the wizard's baby? No. She wants a baby? No. She has a baby. Oh, she's pregnant! She's pregnant and it! Okay, we're skipping to the end now. I'm going to assume, understanding that Abby wants to protect her baby, who has not been mentioned at all. She hasn't even had a thought of her baby up into page 30. Um, I'm going to predict that her baby was kidnapped, stolen away, and she's asking this wizard to help her get her bubba back. And the wizard is going to be like, okay, I'll help you get your bubba back. But the wizard has ulterior motives and is helping her get her bubba back, but for a reason that would also benefit him. And now we're gonna see how that plays out. The water sluicing over it roared as it boiled and steamed. Sluicing. The air wailed as if in protest. <laughs> He writes like the man carrying things sketch video of that edgy <laughs> novel you wrote in middle school or high school. Carl Schmidt decided he wanted to kill him. It was in his bones, like bone marrow. Mariska lifted the squealing child by her hair. Oh, Abby gr gasped in disbelief as the woman sliced the little girl's throat. The child flailed. Blood spurted across Gariska's gnarly fingers as she viciously slaughtered. Is this her kid? No, it's Zed's kid. It's Zed's kid? Ah, oh, ah. Oh. I mean, it sounds like the kid deserved it. She gave a final mighty yank with the knife. The blood soaked body dropped in a limp heap. Okay, now I get why Zed shriek and I'm the dick. Rarely in writing do I come across a time where I'm like a shriek, that's called for here. I'd shriek. Ben, would you shriek? All right. Abby felt vomit welling in the back of her throat. The silty dirt of the riverbank turned a wet red. I'm gonna give Terry Goodkind a compliment. If you're going to put something horrific like that in your book, make it horrific. And Terry Goodkind, he puts horrific stuff in his books and he makes it horrific. A lot of authors forget to do that or they make the mistake of trying to tone it down because they're like, oh, I'm putting something horrific in. Let's not make it super explicit. To me, that's a disservice to the real tragedy people experience. 
when stuff like this does actually happen in our crazy world. If you're going to put horrific stuff in, put it in. And Good Kind absolutely does that. <laughs> Tell me, child, what should I do? <sighs> I know Terry Goodkind is an author. He's going to kill her kid too, isn't he? No, that wouldn't be heroic enough. He needs to have a big bad man save the woman and her desires. So the wizard's gonna save her kid and he's gonna be weirdly emotionally not super caring about his own kid dying. He's gonna get over it and be like, ah, yeah, it's good your kid's alive, but he's gonna have like a sad beat and it's only gonna be a beat. That's my prediction. That's my prediction. We have about 20 pages left, 30 pages were her getting ready to ask a question. It seems about 30 pages are her experiencing this battle climax and resolution. What the f were the pages between? Okay, um, Zed hopped down from the rock. He took her hand and helped her down. Zed snapped his fingers and the rock upon which they had just stood leapt into the air, causing her to gasp in fright. In an instant, so brief that she doubted she had seen it, Zed caught the rock. It had been a small stone, smaller than an egg. He winked at her as he slipped it into his pocket. What? Does he just want to keep a rock from when he killed a bunch of people? Is he a serial killer? This is his trophy? Wait, what's Kayla's note here? His daughter was just beheaded. <laughs> I forgot! Because the book forgot, I forgot! He's like, right after his daughter is decapitated, he's like, it's a cool rock though. Oh, Ben, take that and just put it at the beginning, like coming soon. The whole he did not love his child thing. <laughs> With a sudden thump, thump in the air, fire a That's a sippy sip, I know, I know. <laughs> there is someone waiting for you. He tilted his head, she turned. His daughter was just decapitated in front of him. He tilted his head. Zed rested a hand on Abby's shoulder. Your daughter just died! <laughs> Good fucking God! This is Abigail, born of Helsa, the wizard called out to the people gathered. She is the one who went to the A... I've never seen someone forget a character's daughter died. Is that brought up again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Abby stared in disbelief. There, snug in the bed where Abby had placed her, in the bed from where Mariska had stolen her was Zed's daughter, still sleeping peacefully. Hey, Terry, you don't, you don't do that. <laughs> Are you serious? It's a JK LOL moment, watch. But how? Abby pressed her fingers to her temples. I don't understand. <laughs> the woman was killed by those traps because she came here intent on taking my daughter from where she slept. Terror bear. You don't totally neuter your entire climax by showing it was a JK LOL actually I had control the whole time moment if you're trying to write an adult fantasy novel. I even gave you credit for properly making the death horrific. I rescind that because the death was now a ha ha child not really dead. Uh. What the f this is like if at the end of Jojo Rabbit, when he finds his mom hanging, Scarlett Johansson just undid the harness and was like, nah, actually, I'm fine. You mean it was all an illusion? Abby was dumb. He's making his female protagonist need to have everything explained to her twice. Oh yeah, no, I know. I am the object of vengeance, the wizard explained, and Kayla put in parentheses, Batman voice, so I'm gonna do that now. I am the object of vengeance, the wizard explained. Wait, I am the object of vengeance, the wizard explained. I don't want my daughter to pay the price her mother has already paid. Since my spell killed the woman as she tried to harm my daughter, I was able to use a vision of her to accomplish the deception. The enemy knew the woman, and that was the act for Anagor. I used what they expected to see to convince them and to frighten them into running and leaving the prisoners. Wait, okay. I cast the de oh sorry. I cast the death spell so that it, what what can't his magic do? His magic killed the antagonist off screen, 
replaced her with a body double off screen, created his daughter off screen, and had this all climactic climax with just spells. He's the first wizard, he's daddy. Okay, but you gotta understand, Terry Goodkind doesn't write fantasy, he writes serious literature. There's no thinking it through. Like Terry Goodkind sh out words and is like perfect. Like he has the like there are fantasy authors who spend their careers making one book perfect. Like I give Patrick Roth his crap, but everything is meticulously thought through. Ter Terry Goodkind comes in and he's like done. I have never been more confident in my own book. <sighs> I'm just skipping. Let's get to the end here. I'm so done with this. There will be those over there who will be your foes for life because of this said. You, wait, I need to, I'll, I'll just keep it in this tone, it's fine. You have made bitter enemies with this. You have left them alive. Enemies, the wizard said, are the price of honor. That was an okay line. I'm gonna say it was an okay line. I'm also gonna point out, yes, Kayla had a note that was like, that's a pretty good line, but I'm also gonna point out, this book just ended with the protagonist? not in the scene much. <laughs> you want me to come explain? It's now Kayla's time to explain what actually happens Wait, in this book. do you want me to come next to you here? No, no, you take the spot and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the off-camera voice. So today I read Terry Goodkind. I wanna preface this by saying this is not <laughs> anybody on anyone who loves Terry Goodkind. There is a book for every person and this book is not for me. Um, and that's okay. What happened in this story? <laughs> yeah, there's Abby. Um, and for the first 45 pages, we don't really know what Abby needs. So basically, to give you the story of Dead of Bones, Abby has come to this big old keep to talk to the wizard because she has a request and so many other people have requests and there's an old lady named Mariska who stands behind her with her gnarled hands whispering in her spitty ear like... And um, they go in with some nobles to go see the wizard and the wizard beheads the noble because he's a douche canoe. And so finally Abby's just like, hey, can you come save my people? Cause they've all been kidnapped by like this dude in Dahar. And I would love to get my kid and my husband and my dad back. And he's like, sorry, but like, no. And the whole time I'm just really annoyed because Abby just seems naive and stupid during the whole thing. It's like, really? Does he know? Um, but that just might be a personal thing. She's like, hey, I got this debt of bones he needs to pay. And basically what it turns out is she brought her mother's dead skull as opposed to a live skull, but like, you know, it's just skull and bones now. And she brought that in and she like set it out on the stairs and was like, I brought my mom's dead head. He's got a debt to pay to me cause he owes it to her, pay it. And they were like, all right, we'll try to get you a meeting with him tomorrow since he rejected you today. Um, so then she goes to see the sorcerer and he like looks at the head of her mom and he's like, yep, that's a dead all right. And so he's like, I'm gonna use these magic sand ruins to make magic that has never been made before and it's gonna rip a hole in the fabric of reality, but I'm gonna stop the evil bad dude named, oh gosh, now you only got me thinking as penis real. And then she's like, oh no, I see in the shadows, there's a woman in red leather with a big long braid and she's an assassin. And I know she, what she's gonna do because apparently they're called something Sith. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Doesn't matter, nothing matters. And so this little Sith lady has the ability to like absorb magic power and then reverberate it onto the user. And so he like powers up and then sends it at her and the lady's like, Baha! no. So he's like, I saved all the prisoners because they left them. And then I shot this wall of fire and now they're held back and we have all the prisoners. And Abby's like, holy shit, oh my God, there's my husband, there's my daddy, there's my girl, but I'm really sorry about your dead kid. He's like, just kidding. She's still asleep in your cabin. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's great. And he's like, do you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna establish a land where there's no magic. So anybody who doesn't want to use magic can go live over there. And then I'm gonna make another green firewall and that'll be the boundary lines. So everyone inside the green firewalls will have magic in their lives and everyone outside of the green boundary walls will not 
All right, ran out of battery. Let me finish real quick. So anyway, um, they decide that they're going to have a land that has no magic and they're going to live in magic and Abby runs off into the distance and the mother confessor is like, mm, I don't know if this is a real nice idea and the sorceress is like, you made a bunch of enemies and I'm very certain this is setting up for the actual book series. But overall, I would say even though this is a prequel series, as someone who has never read Terry Goodkind, I was really disappointed because... It just felt like a bunch of garbled words thrown at me and like a various tropes that I'm already familiar with so I could follow. But nothing actually made sense to me as a cohesive story other than like hitting the basic pinch points and it felt so forced. I'm not trying to actively rip on it. It is just how I feel. If you enjoy Dead of Bones, I'm really happy because there's a book for everyone out there, and I hope this book is someone else's. But unfortunately, it is not mine. And uh, thank you all for listening to this wrap-up. Thank you so much, Parrot, for sponsoring this dumpster fire. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And check out my books, Neon Ghosts, Breach of Peace, or Rebel's Creed. If you would like to read more garbage. And Ben, good luck editing this video. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.